What's going on guys? My name is Alonso. Welcome to the channel. I'm here set up with a pulley system, a few dynos, and five and six millimeter diamond braid polyester rope. I made a video last time and I'll put that video here where we broke both of these ropes inside the protraction and the micro traction. Today, we are using this little guy. Now this is the Roland lock. It's made in Italy. It's rated to 20 kilonewtons on the master point here and 10 kilonewtons per strand. Uh, obviously, we know we're not gonna break this thing. Huge thank you to my buddy Steve Griggs for letting me borrow this little device. Uh, we're gonna be doing two things on this video. We're gonna be doing three tests on each of these ropes to see what they break at inside this guy, used properly, of course. Then, because some of you requested, we're gonna see what these ropes break at in a realistic setting. Um, I like to use a button line on a bike. Got a carabiner here. I like to do one of these guys, so. You just kinda put it through, around, back up, and then in that little pretzel knot thing you've got there, you stick a bite through there, pull it with some tail hanging down. And this is really nice because uh, when you send this across and the other team receives the webbing, all they have to do is pull on this little tail here and it actually is like a quick release. You see that? So that's what I've been using to send webbing across. So that's what I'm going to break today. Essentially what we're trying to do, we're trying to make hauling big slack lines safer for the community. So that's why we're out here. That's why we're testing these things because obviously um, right here on the side plate, this device is only rated for ropes that are between eight and 13 millimeters. Obviously our ropes are not that thick. We need to use thinner ropes because we have to carry them with us everywhere. And we are using sometimes kilometers of this stuff to get a webbing across a gap so we really don't have much to work with we're using devices that just aren't meant for these purposes so that's why we got to do some backyard science to just figure it out so with that being said i'm going to set up the first test with the five mil in this guy and i will see y'all in a little bit so stay tuned for that with that being said this device definitely looks like it could be double wrapped so we will be doing some double wrap tests as well on both the five mil and I'll see if I can fit the six mil in there, though it's probably not likely. Here goes the first brake test. I forgot to reset this dyno. Looks like it doesn't matter though, because I have two more. 1.85 kilonewtons. So we're gonna do that two more times, see what we get, average our results, and we'll get back to you. So setting up test number two now. It's hard to tell, but I really, really feel like this rope engaged a little bit before it actually broke. We got 2.14 kilonewtons, but I don't think this test is valid because of that reason. So we're gonna scrap this test and we're gonna do it again. And I'm gonna make this a little bit longer this time. One point nine six kilonewtons, so not too bad, rolling lock. Wow, now I'm beating myself up. I really wish I would have recorded the third test because I actually got it to slip. It didn't break. It was kind of weird. I I think the reason, uh, one of the reasons I think that may have happened actually, one thing that I noticed that was a little bit odd actually was uh, this is all coming out of a big bag. It's right down there. And uh, when, as I was pulling it and it like lifted it up, I didn't have enough slack out of the bag. So the back end of this caught just a tiny little bit of tension. And I'm wondering if that was enough to somehow um, disengage the camming thing here and just allow it to slip. 2.06 kilonewtons. That's actually pretty good for five mil. That's, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked with those results. Uh, I think I already like the rolling lock better than the micro and the pro tracks. Uh, I'm gonna try double wrapping it now with the five mil. People in their need for speed over here. Anyway, as I was saying, 
I'm gonna double wrap it now with the five mil and see what we get. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of stretching because I think we'll have to be doing some pulling to get this broken. So, by the way, guys, this video is also broken down into chapters. If you look below, everything has its own thing. So I try to make it real organized here so you guys can scroll through the video, look at whatever tests you want to look at, look back at other tests, etc., etc. Now, with that being said, guys. If you guys are still watching this video, if you're getting any value from it, if you're just enjoying it, do me a big favor, hit that like and subscribe button down in that corner of the screen. It helps my small channel out a lot. I really appreciate you for doing it, and it keeps me stoked for making more videos like these. So, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate y'all. Anyway, let's uh, continue with the tests. All right, so I'm actually finding something really, really interesting here. The double wrap goes on this system. Uh, however, there's a little problem. Bummer, I did not bring my micro traction, but I do have the protraction and I will try to talk about it here. So if you look at this device, uh, it's got a pulley and it's got the tooth, the thing that captures progress just on top of the pulley. And the micro traction, unlike the protraction, doesn't have this big piece of plastic here. So um, you're able to double wrap. Uh, however, that means that um, in order to undo your thing, you just need to pull a little bit of tension into the system, and this guy can be pulled right up. And even if you've got a double wrap in here, you can take those wraps right out. On the Roland lock, however, that feature isn't quite the same. Um, simply because you have to be able to take it completely off the carabiner because the, the thing to disengage the cam is actually on the sides of the plate right here and you'll see that it's actually being um, pushed by this guy so if you were to use this double wrap method on the roll and lock you would need a way to, to take the tension completely off and there are ways to do that not a big deal just kind of something I wanted to point out and be uh, fully aware of but uh Anyways, uh, we've got the double wrap. I'm actually really, really excited for this. I think we're gonna get any, I think we're gonna get a breaking strength in the high twos, um, possibly even low threes, I don't really know. But um, yeah, let's let's see what we get. Test number one, double wrap in five mil in the Roland lock. Here we go. Two point three eight, uh, still not, horrible actually that's pretty good so our five mil double wraps in the micro traction we got 2.16 2.37 and 2.42 here we got 2.38 which is pretty close to what test 2 in the micro was so um you know it might be very similar in terms of breaking strength however a uh, good thing to keep in mind this thing does not have those sharp teeth so um it's probably safer to use something like the rolling lock over the micro tracks just because it'll give your tagline a much longer life those teeth won't dig into your non-sheathed rope because that's what this is it's non-sheathed rope so from a safety perspective i i'm just going to automatically assume that a device like the rolling lock is safer than a device like the micro traction let me know what you guys think down in the comments could be wrong in fact I am often wrong I'm just a dude on the internet breaking things in his parents backyard living the dream so yeah if you guys have any thoughts on this so far let me know down in the comments let me know what you'd like to see in future videos I, I have a lot of fun doing this so yeah let me know guys keep those comments coming Two point one eight. That one was uh, significantly lower by a fifth of a kilonewton. Two point two. Very similar to test two, only higher by point oh two kilonewtons. So the average on this one was like two point two five. Honestly, I don't think that was better than the double wrap in the micro tracks. At least as far as strength. Goes. I'm not gonna break this five millimeter rope in just two figure eights. I know at the beginning of the video I said I was gonna do it on that uh, button line on a bite, but I 
not on video, but I did do a brake test of the bun line on a bite, and let me just tell you, it was ridiculously hard to take off the carabiner. In fact, I couldn't. I had to, uh, I had to cut it off with a knife. So I don't want to do that for every test. Um, and figure eights, even though they get welded on, I can still unclip them. So I'm just gonna do a couple tests on figure eights just to see the realistic break strength of this rope and compare it to the valleys we're getting and see how high our retaining percentage is. So here we go. Three tests back to back to back. Get ready. Two point seven four, that's actually really good. Three point one. And 2.74, very close to the first test. An odd man in the middle. If you guys know why that may be, drop that down in the comments. Is it just uh, random weaknesses within the five mil? Is it because I suck at tying figure eights? Uh, I don't really know, you guys tell me. Now we're gonna move over to six mil. We're gonna single wrap it in the rolling lock and we're gonna see what we get. 3.06, I mean, that's just really low. So we're gonna do that two more times, see if we can get consistent results. 3.82, yeah, that's a much bigger swing. That's uh, almost the whole kilonewton. 4.24, yeah. Because of the big variance in all these tests, uh, I'm gonna do one more for the six mil. So far we've gotten 3.06, 3.82 and 4.24, which is insane. Everything's all over the place. 3.48. I don't know what to make of that. Um, if any of you guys know why this may be, drop it down in the comments, but we are getting vastly different numbers on these tests. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm now, for the last thing, just gonna break it a couple times in a figure eight, see what we get. 6.38, yep, I am, I'm not surprised. This is a thicky rope, look at this stuff. 4.9 kilonewtons, so this one was definitely weaker than the first, so we're gonna do one more test. 5.68, so all right guys, um, based off the results we've got, the rolling lock, Really doesn't make that big a difference when you compare it to the to the micro traction. I mean, the brake test results were not that much higher. Uh, now the only other thing to consider is uh, safety. So the roll and lock, unlike the micro and pro traction, doesn't really have teeth. It's just got these ridges right here. Perhaps the roll and lock is a little less likely to pierce your rope, causing a weak point, causing it to break at a premature strength. With all that being said, I kind of still prefer the micro traction. It just seems like a, an easier device to use. And if you've got a double wrap, it's super good enough. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. I think I'm going to be sticking with a double wrap in a micro tracks for my tag lines. If you guys have another device in mind that I should test that might be better for thin tag lines like the five mil and the six mil, let me know. I will happily do that. Is safety with uh, the same or slightly lower numbers better than teeth with slightly higher numbers? Uh, I don't really know. Again, uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Please drop them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, if you found it useful or entertaining in any way, do me a favor, hit those buttons down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be doing more of these videos. If you guys throw down enough comments, let me know what you guys wanna see and I'll see y'all on the next video.